Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my new patrons, C's T and William K. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up, everything seems to be on track for the first deliveries from Giga Berlin tomorrow, Tuesday, the 22nd. Sawyer had this tweet that Tesla officially received an operating permit. However, there's a chance that there's no actual permit being given. It's just that all of those checks that Tesla needed to prove have actually been completed. It was actually Tobias Lind who said there isn't an actual operating permit, but Sawyer was was getting it from this direct correspondence from Tesla where they say we officially received our operating permit. Either way, all you need to know, Giga Berlin has the green light, delivery should start tomorrow. Over the weekend, Sawyer, Alex, and Omar shared some new information on their X pod, so here are the takeaways. With regard to Cybertruck, it could launch initially with three different variants, a base dual motor, which might replace the single motor rear wheel drive, a mid dual motor, there was no differentiation given, and the tri motor, which will have the bigger battery pack size. Sawyer said the quad and plaid motors have been pushed back, but no timelines given. The Cybertruck should be bigger than the Rivian as the Rivian is a mid-size pickup. However, the Cybertruck should actually weigh less. The efficiency of the Cybertruck should be far superior to the Rivian. And Jordan at the Limiting Factor said that Cybertruck might come in at around 5,500 pounds for a base weight compared to the Rivian currently at 7,200 pounds. We got some updates on Tesla's new Powerwall 3 that is supposed to launch later this year. The current Powerwall Plus is 13.5 kilowatt hours. It uses 2170 nickel manganese cobalt cells. It has 9.7 kilowatts of backup power and it's water cooled, which is a bit more complicated and it has 15 kilowatts for solar power. And let's compare that to the new Powerwall 3 set to use prismatic LFP cells, which means it should be cheaper, it should be safer, and it should have better cycle life given the LFP chemistry. The new Powerwall 3 is supposed to be 50% bigger in terms of backup power, jumping up to 15.4 kilowatts. This one is going to be air-cooled, which will give it better efficiency, and it will have less failure probabilities. It will be a smaller form factor, and it should have 25 kilowatts of solar power. Essentially what that means is Powerwall 3 will be able to take in more power from solar panels and push out more power to the home from these solar panels. And a quick update on supercharging. It looks like V4 is on track to launch this year, which should be around 350 kilowatts. Some people are talking 375, but Sawyer said, let's just stick with 350 for now. There is some speculation here, so proceed with caution that all cars since mid 2021 could actually use this new V4 charging technology. Sawyer said the Model S might be getting colored ambient lighting for the interior later this year sometime around Q3. I personally would love this as I am a fan of interior lighting as long as it has optionality. Tesla insurance might be coming to 16 more states throughout the course of 2022. That would make it for 21 states total, adding to the five currently approved. And Omar concluded that there might be a Tesla bot prototype later this year in quarter four or early quarter one 2023 using the autopilot vision system. So if these reports are true, Cybertruck could launch with three initial variants, plus two more later in terms of a high performance Cybertruck, making for a total of five variants, all of course subject to change. Here we have a new Tesla note from Jeffries. They say they've been cutting estimates across OEMs, but they're raising estimates for Tesla. Jeffries has, however, lowered its Tesla price target from 1,400 to 1,250, but this was due to macro risks and rising interest rates, which is really just simple math. When interest rates rise, the present value of future cash flows decreases. Jeffries noted Tesla gave a confident message at the March auto conference that price increases and long-term supply contracts are comfortably offsetting the cost of inflation. Jeffries is expecting Tesla gross margins of 29% for this year, and they're expecting Tesla to generate $10 billion of free cash flow for 2022 and $14 billion in 2023. Right now, there seems to be much confusion around the Model X seating configurations. The first five-seater Model X has been delivered. However, this was the dual motor version, not the Plaid. Coming to Tesla's website and looking at the base dual motor, if you scroll down, you will see five, six, and seven seat options are available for order. However, when you switch to the Model X Plaid and scroll down with the base wheels, you can see only the six seat option is available. 
No change with the upgraded wheels, still only six seats available. And in response to the first five seater dual motor variant being delivered, Elon said, the six seat Model X is best IMO. There are times when I only want to offer that variant. In case you ever drive by a Tesla delivery center and you see something like this, no need to panic. It's basically a coordination system for the delivery center. Once the cars are dropped off at the delivery center, this can be a way for the employees to know which vehicles have been checked in and which have not. From GF4 Tesla, we get some new images of Giga Berlin from Sunday as they prepare for the first deliveries set to take place tomorrow. As you can see, the artwork is coming along nicely. I think it looks really good. And Elon did add that Giga Berlin Brandenburg will be covered with beautiful art inside and out. Now, real quick, when it comes to investing, I'm now able to share a new part of my strategy, all thanks to the sponsor of today's video, masterworks.io. Masterworks brings the fine art market to everyday people via fractional share ownership. And here it is, a famous piece of artwork by Jonas Wood that I now personally own shares of. If you couldn't guess, yes, I'm a huge basketball fan and I've played basically my entire life. So why am I investing in art in the first place? Well, contemporary art has outpaced the S&P 500 by 164% from 1995 to 2021 and Citibank research has shown contemporary art has the lowest correlation to the stock market of any major asset class and has outperformed in times of inflation. And truly one of the best things Masterworks has done for me was the free phone call I had with James, a Masterworks expert who walked me through all of my questions and went way out of his way to make sure that I was totally comfortable. So now I can hold my shares until Masterworks sells the artwork or I can sell my shares sooner on the secondary market. So if you would like to skip the waitlist, use my link below or the QR code on the screen and find out for yourself why so many people are excited about Masterworks.io. We get a little bit more more detail when it comes to Tesla's master plan part three. Elon said the main Tesla subjects will be scaling to extreme size, everybody loves to hear that, which is needed to shift humanity away from fossil fuels, comma, and AI. But I will also include sections about SpaceX, Tesla, and The Boring Company. Some are speculating Elon may have meant SpaceX, Neuralink, and The Boring Company because why would he list Tesla obviously as Tesla's master plan? Either way, this will bring up conversations about the X holding company again. I personally I personally would prefer Tesla to stay a separate entity and for boring Neuralink and Elon's other endeavors to be separate, maybe IPO when they're ready to generate more cash flow. We just don't know when the boring company or Neuralink will become profitable if ever, and so I'm hoping that this comment is more about synergies between these companies, not necessarily merging them into one ultimate company. The most exciting comment here is Elon saying extreme size. I do not remember Elon ever saying this before, and we already know that Tesla was expecting to make 20 million cars per year. However, to do this, they will need more gigafactories. We know that we should have an announcement for the next gigafactory maybe later this year, but maybe we'll get more than one announced as both Berlin and Austin were being built at the same time. There was a study done by Auto Pacific. Now only 600 respondents were surveyed. However, Tesla took the number one spot in terms of what brands do you trust most to develop safe and reliable fully autonomous vehicles. There were over 52 different brands for consumers to choose and Tesla garnered 32% of the votes. Tesla provided an update to customers on that Oklahoma Bill 3994. We've talked about it before. The only update is that it has indeed passed the committee stage, which we already knew but it's going before the full House of Representatives for a vote this week. And I'm sure many of you would like me to comment on this situation. I'm not going to. I think it's a waste of your and my time. More importantly, I'm really not a fan of this type of culture, and it's very sad to me to see how many millions of people love this type of stuff and are so interested in it, and this is the type of stuff that goes viral. It's just disappointing to me that so much of our culture, and especially the younger generation, think that this behavior is cool. This was shared on a Reddit forum. This is the MVPA or Motor Vehicle Purchase Agreement. This is for the United States. We learned over the weekend that China is basically going to limit anyone buying a Tesla from reselling it. And just to be clear, apparently this has been in the United States MVPA for some time as well. So you're not actually allowed to buy a Tesla with the intention of then flipping it for a profit. Here we have an update on CureVac and this may sound familiar. They're developing a new class of transformative medicines based on messenger ribonucleic acid or mRNA. Dylan, why are you sharing this? Well, if you scroll down, you will see 
This RNA printer is being engineered in collaboration with Tesla Automation. I actually did a video on this very topic if you'd like to learn more. Here we have a chart from the IHS market and I just want to point out that Rivian is actually currently outsourcing its electric motors and a big portion of its drive unit. As you can see, Tesla down on the right hand side along with BYD in terms of in-source components. And this chart is for electric drive unit sourcing in BEVs percent by volume. So with all of these supply chain issues that we've been talking about for years now, it definitely makes sense for people to want to shift to the right as this is vertical integration over here. So yes, Rivian said that they are working on their own motors in-house. However, for now, they are indeed outsourcing. Here we have a video from Jeff on Twitter sharing the Tesla Model Y in the Revel fleet in New York City, basically the taxi service using Teslas. As you can see, you can control a lot of the features from the back seat that directly integrates to the main media control unit up front. So I thought that was pretty cool. Over the weekend, Porsche announced it will be building out its own EV charging infrastructure, which is a big move. Porsche did say the stations will have lounges where owners can sit and relax or work while the cars are charging. And this build out is going to start in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. Here we have the new EPA estimates for the Ford F-150 Lightning. It looks like it's going to start at 230 miles of range for the standard range version and go all the way up to 320 miles of range for the XLT ER and the Lariat ER as well. And the standard range is expected to start around $40,000, which would be a great entry point for a vehicle like this. So hopefully Ford can pull it off and ramp up production. It's also worth noting that Ford's targeted EPA ranges were all lower than the actual final EPA estimated ranges. As you can see, four different variants actually increased when it came to the final EPA estimated ranges, which is a great thing Ford under promising and over delivering. Volkswagen's major plant for BEVs is going to be shut down until April and the first First shutdowns actually started in February. So this will affect the ID series lineup and the Audi Q4. But the same concerns are taking place at the Dresden plant, which is where they make the ID3. And I'll send you guys off today with some new footage from Giga Shanghai. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.